everyone. Welcome in. This is Marlene with Room to Bloom. Thanks for joining me today. So I picked this book up the other day and it is called Space Clearing A to Z, How to Use Feng Shui to Purify and Bless Your Home. This is a book by Denise Lin. Um, I, I liked it. it. It caught my attention the way that it was tabbed, um, almost like a three ring binder is tabbed, right? With these big letters. It just caught my attention. And I opened up the page, the first two pages, and the first one was altar, and the second one is angels. And, and I didn't go any further, but I knew, like, just even with the angels on here, that this book would be a representation of something that I wanted to bring forth and share. Um, and so the first one on here is called an altar. It says, or it's about an altar. It says, a permanent home altar can generate energy that can keep an entire home balanced and clear. In ancient times, almost every home had an altar. It was a traditionally it was traditionally placed by the hearth or the heart of the home and was a place where the family communed with the divine. The home altar represented a connection between heaven and earth, and it was a place for supplication, quiet reflection, and meditation. There is great value in recreating this ancient tradition. An altar doesn't need to be religious. It can be a highly personal representation of what is most important to you, your hopes, your dreams, joys and sorrows, and your connections to other people and to what you hold sacred. It can be a place to still your thoughts and to open your heart to your intuition. An altar can be a small haven of beauty and solace where you can retreat when life gets too hectic. It's easy to make an altar. All you need is a table or a shelf a bit out of the way, spread a small beautiful cloth on the surface, and collect things that represent your aspirations and your sense of the creator. Although you may want to position your home shrine by the hearth, it can be placed anywhere that feels right to you. You can dedicate your altar to a special time in your life, such as a holiday or a birthday, or something you desire, such as a new job or relationship. Altars can also have themes such as love, peace, acceptance, creativity, and abundance. However you choose to set up your altar, it should only include objects or pictures that are true representations of what you want in your heart. Also, every altar ought to have a center point. This can be a candle, a photo, or some other object that represents a higher power for you. For one person, this might be a spiritual teacher. For someone else, it might be a scene from nature. Whatever you choose for your altar's center point should be something that lifts your heart every time you look at it. The most effective altars are kept clean, 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 I'm sorry, cleansed and dusted. Flowers should be fresh. Water should be replenished daily. By cleansing and purifying your home shrine, you create a, a template of life force energy that permeates your entire home. So really um, interesting. I was reading another book called, um, let's see. I think it's called Spirit Guides and Angels, and I'm sorry I don't have it right in front of me. But I, I, I uh, got to this point, and it was talking about an angel altar. And I looked up, and I never, it wasn't like my intention for this to happen. It just sort of unfolded as I was like appreciating these, you know, uh, these, um, oh, just little things that made me feel light. They were pretty, they're light in color, right? Um, and I looked up and I, and I, without that intention, it, it flowed through me and came together. And it was, <laughs> so I, I kind of have that and I didn't know it. So it was interesting that this, because I had just realized it, then I got this book that says altars and then angels. <laughs> so that's why I thought, okay, so this is interesting. I'm not going to get into the angels right now. We'll do that another day, but I do have a feng shui deck that I want to use. Uh, to be honest with you, I think it's a little bit of an older deck, but I know that the, the theory 
is the same. And I'm not a, a Feng Shui specialist. However, um, I, I've seen like a variety of videos on it and it is um, really beautiful. It's about creating balance, energy, and harmony in your home, in your environment, um, so that energy isn't getting blocked. It's about how like one might place their bed in their room for like what, what's considered a, um, I, I don't wanna say it wrong, like a power location or something like that. Anyway, I'm just gonna shuffle these cards and we'll see what comes out. What would you like to show us here for the collective that would be helpful? Um, we'll take out a couple Feng Shui cards. <clears throat> as long as this book is on Feng Shui. And then just kind of thinking about that. Um, you know, many people, I think, you know, they say they have the hearth, right? So what do they have on the hearth? Many family pictures or different, you know, little things. Or they change them out with the seasons, just like this was saying. And so you might, like me, not even realize that maybe you have kind of put together an altar, not even knowing that that's kind of what it ended up being, um, but encouraging you. I, I like the encouragement of, oh, you know, having memories, but not fully like just living in the past, having a memory of someone um, or something that maybe you're working towards uh, but it also is really important to learn how to be in the present and not just only focus on what the future item is it's like in this moment i'm taking a step in this moment i'm taking a step right um so it is about learning to appreciate and to live in each and every present moment okay so what do you have for us okay so here i have a bedroom it says, this one says single woman's bedroom. The number on it is 33. So interesting because 33 is a healer's card. It says to attract more romance in your life, replace any bedroom furniture that carries bad memories from your past relationships. Check your furnishings for sharp corners, edges, or legs um, that could be dangerous to sleepy bodies, okay? Stuffed animals, dolls, or copious pillows on the bed carry the message that the bed is already taken. Make, make yours a sensuous, unencumbered bed that can fall into whatever a single, I'm sorry, fall into without a single care. Replace any portraying com, um, companionless figures, solitary animals, or others one some objects, change them to two some art, pairs of people, or two of anything that inspires you. Arrange nightstands and lamps on both sides of your bed and place pairs of items in the love and marriage area of your home and your bedroom. Set the stage. Now there's two other cards for that. So maybe I'll look at that here. But set the stage for receiving a new partner by treating yourself with the same care you'd show a lover. A loving relationship with yourself will make you more radiant and attractive as a partner. Create a bedroom atmosphere where you can rest, rejuvenate, and really enjoy your own company. And you know, that is so true. It's, um, you know, I think say sometimes people might say secretly want flowers to be sent to them. Well, rather than waiting, go and get yourself a bouquet of flowers, right? And that is speaking to the universe that I love, I love myself, right? Um, also, but taking into consideration, right? When we are looking at the universe, there's also this saying that is, that says, if you like a flower, you'll cut it. If you love a flower, you'll let it grow. So these are the things that we contemplate, right? Um, so in what ways can you bring beauty into your life and home, um, especially in this particular case, a single woman's bedroom to say, I am ready for this. Now, another thing that I want to say that this card did not say is um, sometimes we have to tell the universe that we are ready for something new, okay? So let's say that your closet is so stuffed 
and you are a single person, right? It's so stuffed that there wouldn't even be room for another person to come in and put their stuff in. So sometimes we have to say to the universe, all right, I am preparing the space. Like a mother who is nesting for their child that is being born, you prepare, you prepare your home. You understand that when you meet someone, they too will have material items, right? They will have their clothing or whatever it is. And so this is about saying, okay, I am making space for this new person to come into my life, right? Um, and, and so looking at all ways might that work. So if your hall closet is totally packed, right? They're going to want room, right? If you're, um, say you have a two or three car garage, and one or two of the stalls is totally packed. They're going to want to park there, right? So working through that stuff. Um, do you love your home? Do you feel good in your home? Or do you feel overwhelmed in your home? Do you love the colors? How do they make you feel? Do they make you feel anxious? Do they take you down, right? Um, asking yourself this question, um, how, in what ways can you bring balance into your home when where areas feel out of balance, right? So whether it is um, cluttered or messy or dirty or, you know, what whatever that is, in what ways might you clean it up? Because when you're telling the universe and you're taking action steps that I am preparing for this new person, to come into my life. I'm preparing and I'm telling the universe with each step that I take that I am readying myself, right? That sometimes has to do with, you know, the healthier meals or the healthier body, right? Um, so maybe you're, uh, you're not as active as you once used to be, but you'd like to be more active. Sometimes we want to be more active and and be more active with another person so we're not being active. But sometimes it's like saying, you know what, I want to be fit because when this new person is coming into my life, I want to be ready to do more physically, right? Um, to be able to explore more. So it's, it is definitely asking yourself those questions. Let's take another one here. Just have to watch the video for the timing. All right, what else do you have for us? Okay, the next one is the children's bedrooms. Unlike the master bedroom, it is a good idea to keep family photos in children's bedrooms. Photographs of loving caregivers, such as parents and grandparents, make children feel secure and watched over at night. Many uh, hyperactive children are sleeping in bedrooms with bright red sheets and walls full of action figures. Calm their bedroom by replacing bright colors with skin tones that wrap children in a cozy, tranquil embrace. Choose serene or happy art that doesn't fly, fall, drive, or race around the room. Children are often very sensitive to mirrors, curtain-mirrored closet doors so that they can open them as needed and drape or screen other mirrors as needed. So that's another thing about Feng Shui is about not having mirrors in the bedroom that face the bed. Um, so I did wanna mention that, that's like any bedroom. Oversee the care of pets living in children's bedrooms such as hamsters, turtles, and fish as a neglected pet depletes the energy of a youngster's bedroom. So making sure that they are taking care of it, taking care of the um, whatever, their cage, their cleansing, they're making sure the water, the food bowls are getting washed regularly, right? That it is clean and maintained. When children share a bedroom, give each child a distinct place to call his or her own, such as a table, a closet, or a shelf. This keeps each child's chi individually defined and teaches them to respect another space, right? So this I really, really love because um, 
if you've watched my channel before, you've you've heard me speak about this, that as adults, when we are working to quiet our mind and to not feel so fragmented and to bring ourselves together, I encourage um, people to create a special space in their home. And if that feels like it's just too much because there's too many people, then maybe, you know, going in the room. So having a quiet bedroom, you know, without electronics, you know, um, things like that. But then furthermore, um, that can, might be a challenge, right? Because others might be knocking on the door. Why do you get time when I don't get time, right? And so what I'm trying to say here is setting up the family to all do this, right? To all take this time to pull themselves back together, to put the electronics away, to slow down the frenzy and to get out of that chaotic feeling and to bring their themselves back to wholeness, right? Um, and then, like this said, it was so perfect because, you know, red is a uh, power color, right? So even moving, like, I love this for a child's bedroom, the skin tone. See, I hadn't even heard those words, but like a very soothing or soft color. So if you have someone in your home who has high anxiety, right? doing that room in a very soft, soothing color, relaxing. It it brings down the anxiety, especially if the rest of the home, say, is very bright. Um, if you have another who is more in a depressive state, so the energy tends to be low, then you would want to uh, bring their room up, bring their energy up in their room with much brighter colors that lift the spirit, right? Um, and um, another thing that I want to say is that black attracts negative energy, okay? So um, removing or stopping to wear a lot of black will also help someone who say they're in a depressive state. It's attracting negative energy. So if they put on white, that is more of a reflective color, right? And it starts to shift the mood. They may not go from black to white, but if they can get out of the black and start shifting colors to um, lighter tones, stuff that is a little bit more bright, and and then putting on those white shirts, you know, white white clothing, um, making it a habit. At least twice a week, I wear white, and see how it makes the person feel. Um, you know, it was a big shift. I, I had um, business clothes that, you know, I, I wear a lot of bright colors, but I definitely had black. I went in my closet and I took out every single piece of black clothing I owned and I removed it. And um, it isn't that, you know, I'm against it or anything, but I realized that it was absolutely, like I wasn't really wearing it at this po point in time anyway. Um, but sometimes I'd reach for it, but every time I would, I would, I, I just instinctively knew, no, I do not feel good in that, in that color. It, it, it does not resonate with me. And then I, um, had been watching something and it said that that is, it attracts negative colors. Also, like when you are looking at crystal stones, interestingly, the black stones, obsidian, um, let's see. Oh, I can't say the names of all of them, but black stones um, are stones of protection, right? Because they're actually pulling in uh, the negativity. So, so they're stones of protection, the, the black stones. And, and maybe I said that wrong about pulling in the negativity, but I'll get back on here. There's black onyx, obsidian, um, but they are stones of protection. So very interesting. But, um, you know, asking yourself, what do you need protection from? Right? So there are, um, every person and everything embodies an energy, right? Everything is energy. So what types of things do we bring into our home? What are we watching? What are we taking in? What are we eating, right? 
Um, what are we listening to? And so, again, if you have someone who is in a depressive state, um, as a parent, you might, you know, start trying to see if you can shift that. And, you know, there's a lesson in that. It's about encouraging. It's not about demanding. It's about inspiring um, new directions, uh, but not insisting, right? Because each person has their own journey. And so, um, but as a parent, when your kids are younger, you can make sure if, you know, when you are being aware of your children and what they are going through and experiencing, you can uh, simply change the color of their room, right? And just make a conscious choice to do this. Um, saying, you know, there is much more to the universe and to spirit, God, angels, than meets the eye, right? So if you do not see and you are not connecting or feeling connected, right? Um, you can just go about your day and um, notice that your child has high anxiety in a red bedroom and, and never do anything about it. But it's like, okay, let's do this. Here's another thing. So let's say that the room that you paint is of a earth tone color. Um, it's very interesting because you can change the color of sheets very easily. You can change the color of curtains very easily. Change the color of a picture frame, little things, and then and see what um, what someone's um, color or color tone is that helps them feel very much at peace in their own environment, right? Um, where they really connect with their own spirit, with their higher self. So I just, you know, I think that we have a lot of um, opportunities to look at that. Now, here's the other thing. If you live in an apartment um, and say you have someone who is in a depressive state, well, you know, people say, well, I can't paint, right? But, but now they have that, um, rub on kind of wallpaper. It's like post-it wallpaper. You can remove it. You can take it off. You can try different things. Um, again, you know, picking up a pillow of a splash of color, looking at the chakras, each chakra. So say you have a child who isn't really speaking up a lot, right? Bringing blue in will really help them to begin to open up their throat chakra bring in uh, better listening abilities, right? Um, if someone has a lot of fear or they're, they're feeling lack, bringing in red will help raise that, right? Um, yellow is about, say someone was being bullied at school. Yellow is a power color. And, and having a discussion with a younger person to say, We're, we want to talk right now about the solar plexus chakra, the yellow chakra, which is like your gut instinct. And um, when people try to take our power away and how we learning to speak our truth and have our voice raises our, um, it, uh, it shifts the imbalance, okay, of a solar plexus chakra. Also bringing your child in to um, have a Reiki session right? There's all these different things that one can do that one may not have ever done. It's like, oh, we have to go to the doctor and, um, you know, have them talk to whatever. It could be a mental health therapist. It could be whatever it is and get a prescription, right? But what if you tried some alternative methods first before giving your child medications. I'm just saying, you know, that that might be the route to go, but this might be one to certainly consider. Okay. And, you know, children, oftentimes they want to be heard and yet they don't know the words to speak. Right. So this is where getting quiet and, you know, as a parent, oftentimes, you know, your child's energy, right? So, you know, when something is off, when they are not on their 
when they are not connected to their soul, when they had an experience. Say so they go to school, they come back, they've had some type of experience and they may not want to talk about it. And don't push that. Don't push that, but give them the space that they need. Um, hold space for them and say, I'm here for you, right? But don't, you know, if you recognize that they're getting depressive and whatever and they want to go shopping, don't buy all black clothing because that isn't going to help the situation, right? So anyway, I want to say thanks for joining me. I hope you have an amazing day. Take care.